people deluded I'm back again sadly the videos in Soho Square are over but I've been scouring Camden looking for new areas to do videos and whatnot and it appears fairly quiet around here bit dodgy down this corner I mean could you imagine this is looking like some Green Street scene or something where the firms start fighting and that but you know I think we can do okay with this so you know to Camden to Northwest London to DG vids in Northwest London you know let's see what the locals have to say when they see their new to become favorite weirdo speaking in their account into his camera from lunchtime to lunchtime but I've got some things to speak about um, in no particular order of no real relevance other than the fact that I just like to speak to you guys in relation to Pablo Marie now it's too early to really review his performance at Arsenal in terms of how he's gonna be here you can only judge a man on what he plays sorry people people are driving yeah, done not. You know, I'm never gonna give UPS free advertising. But um, like, I, like I was saying, people, um, you can only judge a man based on who he can play in front of. And this is Marie's first opportunity. Yes, he's been involved in two under 23 appearances. But from what I saw against him against Portsmouth, yes, yeah, a league one side, but I think he gave himself some credibility. Considering that in the early exchanges, Arsenal were doing a lot of last ditch defending and all of these things. I think Louise as well, but Marie didn't look like a part of that. What I like about Marie is, again, can't really draw conclusions, but one thing that strikes me already about him, he doesn't try to do things above his pay grade. He knows he's not Van Dyke. He knows he's not the creative done. You know, he keeps it basic. Is there a, a simple pass on? I'm gonna play it. When the time comes, I've seen him do it a couple of times at 23's level now. When the time does become, does come and, and becomes available to him, he has no problem stopping it with his left foot, finding that pass. But it's about balance. And do you know what? I, I think we need a no, a no nonsense sort of guy like that, man. Maybe a bit of it is adjusting to his teammates. Maybe a bit of it is coming out of his shell and showing his personality a bit more. Who knows? I liked also what I saw from him because I felt, um, he was fairly vocal. Of course, I don't understand what he's saying and who he's saying it to or what language he's saying it. But just in terms of you've just come to this club, it's nice to see you wouldn't know that just based on that game. So long may it continue. Of course, you probably need about 10 games or so from him before you can realistically critique his level of performance or where he's at as a defender. Admittedly, again, against Portsmouth, it's not the most, te it weren't the most testing of games where it's going to test every fibre of his defensive, in his ironically defensive arsenal to the brim. It's not going to do that. That game wasn't to do that. But so far, so good. David Luiz, his centre-half partner and a potential long-term partner for him, has said, I'm so happy for Pablo. He's a great guy, a great player, and he's had an, an amazing game. So we are here to help each other. And we are here, 25 players ready to play, ready to play for Arsenal and give the best for the job. And that's it. Whether you're a regular, whether you're a youngster, whether you're a starter, this 25-26 man squad already this season and to be said until May there's a lot of decisions to be made there's a lot of parts for people to play yes we're not in the Europa League anymore so again we're already shackled and whatnot but there's still a lot of football and you don't know when your time will come so it's important to be ready in relation to Arteta he said I think he looks comfortable He's very, he's very vocal and very comfortable on the ball, always commanding the back four, and he looks like he's played here for months. I think we have a good player, 100% fact. And with that being said, no more needs to be said on Pablo Marie, people. Again, it is really a shame trying to do this crap with one hand, because as you lot can see, it's a pain. I've tried to freestyle it, I can no longer no more. I have to, yeah, there we go, there we go. But moving on, people if we can ever get there. Socrates has had to stuff to say in relation to more or less he's not going to stay at Arsenal if it means being a bit part player or if it means not even a bit part player, just staying if he's not wanted. And I'd like to hear that. Previously, Socrates did say at the end of his contract he might consider a move elsewhere, um, but he might be considering his future now. We're obviously as a club facing a rebuild. We've got Marie to come in. Remains to be seen where Arteta will use him or how frequent he will. David Luiz is in good form and seems to be the one that Arteta relies on the most. 
Obviously, Mustafi has had a bit of a resurgence. In particular, Luis, Socrates and Mustafi, all contracts finish in 2021 on top of some other players. So a tough decision has to be made. And if you was to look at it right now, Socrates might be one that might be let go purely because Mustafi is preferred to him. David Luiz is the first name on the team sheet. You've got Marie coming in. Again, we don't know Callum Chambers' is playing level when he returns, but I'd give him a look in. You've got Saliba to come into to come into the fray. You've technically still got Holden, who's a forgotten man who, you know, he might need to go on loan or he could even leave permanently people. So there's a lot of decisions to be made and we still need another centre-half. We need to make tough decisions because it's on one hand, it's good having a lot of centre-halves. On the other, there's a difference between quality and quantity. For me, next season, a key option will be William Saliba. Yes, he's a young player still developing, but for me, Saliba plays. Um, Louise has probably deserved another seat shown he can use, be used and probably deserves another season. Um, I'd like to bring in another centre-half. I would reserve a space for Callum Chambers. I'm not prepared to quite give up on holding yet, but I must admit, yeah, I'm, at the most, I'm at the point in his Arsenal career where it's in the balance. If he was to leave, I don't think I'm going to cry. And Mustafi's a difficult one because do you keep him to a degree? He's turning a new leaf, he's doing his thing. Um, but I'm sure if you would disregard form, are most people convinced he could do this next season? I don't know. Um, to play devil's advocate, can a few good games really change your judgment on a player? Would it make sense giving him a new deal? Potentially because of the form he's been in, could there, have been, could there be no better time to sell Mustafi people, arguably? Because he'll be available for a fairly cheap price and people might think of moving him on. Potentially. People might think, all right, cool, let's try and tempt Arsenal to move him on. Well, we didn't think Mustafi was good, but he's decent. He's contracted until 2021. We're not paying Arsenal back that 30 odd million, 40 million they spent. So let's get him on the cheap sort of thing, people. Um, so we'll never know, but Mustafi said, I don't know, I have one more year here, um, but me, I never sit on a contract. I don't care. If I'm not happy, I don't play enough. Or if the coach doesn't like me, I don't care about the contract. For me, the money is not important. It is important, I feel good, I feel happy, and the team is happy with me. If not, I take the road and I finish. I don't think about it. I think every day to be happy and help the team. In the end, we'll see. But what I say is that I am not a player who sits on a contract. I don't need it. It's tough because the Premier League is the most difficult league, but I think until now I tried. I don't know if I did enough or if people wait for more from me, but what I look for is to give 100% for them and the team and win every game. Football is difficult. Sometimes you arrive here, but you don't drink the water. I hope until the last day I stay here and I give my all for the team. And I think he also said, now we have to see every game is a final for us. We have to win every game if we would like to be there. Obviously, speaking about the Champions League, it's a result that gives you a little bit of confidence back. But we understand that first, when you have three things to fight and lose one, that last year you made the final win, is hard. The first thing the manager said to us is that the game is finished and we have to look forward. And I mean, I'm even going to add on what Mustafi said. That's some real comments from Mustafi. And it is what it is. It's disappointing to be out of the Europa League. But are we going to sit here and cry or are we going to try and have a positive season beyond more than we can potentially have already? Can we get top four? Can we get top five? I don't know, but we need to win games. And I mean, it's nice to hear Socrates saying that it, we need to play every game like a final because it's 100% facts, but we should have been. It's raining. We should have been doing that a long time ago, people. Um, I'd also like to move on to Eddie and Ketia though, and I've spoken about it in a previous vid, but Eddie and Ketia for me is really impressing me. And obviously, I know Reese Nelson, he's not the focus of this vid, but confident performance against Portsmouth coming back from injury. Emil doing his thing at Huddersfield, keen to see him next season. Saka and Martinelli, the young players you can rely on the most. I think Joe Willett's got a future here, and he remains to be seen in what capacity. Um, and I also like Eddie and Ketty. I wouldn't say he's underrated, but I really think there's a player in him. And I think right now what I want to see is that can he be a striker that can get 10 league goals for us? And, uh, and, and beyond that, if he can develop, he can develop. But I really like him. And I think if he continues, then he's doing what he can to give the club something to think about in regards to, you know, we can let Lacazette go and do something else. Um, Eddie's doing what he can. All he can do is take his opportunities and he's taking them. And for me, away from his goals, because goals doesn't necessarily mean good performances. Obviously, a striker's job is to, is to score goals. But what I like about him, definitely since he's come back from Leeds, since he's been introduced to the first team, but definitely since he's come back from Leeds, 
there's more variety in his game. He's mixing it up more. He's dropping deep. He's starting moves a bit more. He's being involved in moves a bit more. The two FA Cup games, the best examples. Um, obviously, in the Premier League, there's still a lot of work to be done because he started against Newcastle, didn't have the best of games, but did all right against Everton. Um, so he's taking his chances. He's come. He's betted on. He could have went on loan. Like he said, Arteta and him were 50-50 on going on loan again. He could have stayed here, trained, not been part of these games, and looked back in May and think you're not. A, you're not, you know, you ain't had a, you've had a season to waste. But I think he's having a season to remember. He's got his head down, he's worked hard, he's fighting for a name on the team sheet, and Arteta's given him that. So when he looks in May and compares to how he was last August, he's going to think, I was a, I'm a dramatically better footballer now. I'm really, and he's getting stronger. I really like what I'm seeing from Eddie, man. It's just about continuously improving. And if you look at minutes per goals, He's on 130, Aubameyang's on 131, and Lacazette, no surprise, is on 220. And obviously, Enketia's um, figures include Leeds, but his strike rate at Arsenal is, one four, is 124 at Arsenal, and it's 133 at Leeds. Um, remains to be seen, can he keep it up? But I really like him, man. And again, I think Eddie, if he keeps developing, it's down to him. Can he be the striker that can get 20 league goals minimum and be number one choice? He needs to work towards that. But for me, in the short and medium term, if he can replace Lacazette, maybe not this much season because Lacazette's not been prolific, but replace Lacazette's role in that we've got another striker who's got the potential to get double figures in all comps or chip in with goals here and there. And beyond that, how far he wants to develop is firmly on him. But I like what I see from Eddie and Ketia, man, and that's what I think we can do from him. And let's move on to Ceballos now, people. Now, Ceballos, would you not make his transfer permanent? I'm just going to keep asking this the more he plays, purely because definitely in his Arsenal career now, we're seeing a bit of what we wanted to see. He's given Arteta a positive headache in that. Does he play Torreira? Does he play Ceballos with Xhaka? Does he play Ceballos because of what he gives to Ozil? Do you see what I'm saying? Ceballos is getting football as well, which is what this loan, loan spell was facilitated for as well, people. I mean, in his last in the last in his last five games for Arsenal, he started three of them, and if you look at it, despite entering the field in the 19th minute. Um, he made 82 passes against Portsmouth. Only Guendouzi, Louis, David Luiz and Pablo Marín played more. And when you consider that, how Guendouzi likes to play, and if you consider the fact that we like to build out from the back, Luiz and Marie are obviously going to touch the ball more times than him, which is pretty impressive from him. There is some more stats, people, if you allow me to just flick up my hands and stuff. Of his 82 passes, 75 were successful. Um, he ended the game with a pass accuracy of 93.9%, which is higher than any other Arsenal player apart from Xhaka, who Xhaka is obviously going to have better stats because he was on the field for a matter of moments, um, really and truly. Um, he's made 23 appearances this season, 13 in the league. Um, he's looked decent against Newcastle and Everton back to back now. He's looked decent in a number of games now and he probably won't be made permanent but surely he's doing all he can to give us that option and if Arteta does want to continue to use him in the way he does and playing him on a regular basis then surely we've got to have that word with Real Madrid if they do want to sell him people. Um, so yeah. Um, no, obviously no, no player contested in more duels than Ceballos, which is 14. Um, and only Guendouzi and Joe Willett regained possession more times than him, despite him only being on the field for 70 minutes, people. Um, so we'll see what happens. Moving away from, moving away from that though, a Nigerian international, Josh Marja, I believe, he plays for Bordeaux, formerly of Sunderland. As a schoolboy, was on the books of Fulham, Manchester City, Crystal Palace and a number of clubs. He is a South Londoner, and I assume a proud South Londoner. Um, plays up front, if you didn't know. He's been linked with Arsenal for a number of times now, after his 3.5 million move from Sunderland to Bordeaux. In fact, he was linked when he was at Sunderland. But he's been linked with Arsenal all, all month, really, and all, all, for a long time. And he's played up to it. He said, I grew, I grew up in London, so certainly my dream is to play in the Premier League. I hope to make it there in the future. My club is Arsenal. I hope to play for them one day. Now, of course, he's he's grew up in London, so playing for the Premier League in any capacity will be something that he's on. 
Bordeaux will probably, I, then I don't know it to be facts, but considering they spent 3.5 million, you can imagine they're gonna make a hand, handsome profit on that when the time comes to sell him. And maybe he wants to leave to boost whatever rates. I'm sure he wants to play in the Premier League, cut his teeth in the Premier League. He's a Nigerian international, so I'm sure he wants to, you know, make sure his proud Nigerian followers are gonna mess, be messing with him in the Premier League. Obviously, that probably makes it a more difficult decision for the international manager if he's playing at a bigger club and whatnot because Nigeria have some good young strikers in particular coming up people I would take him but he's not been the most prolific I mean he's got eight goals in 30 appearances for Bordeaux this season he's got five goals two assists so it's not really he's got the talent he's a good player and he's someone to keep an eye on but if there's any young sort of play people able to play in that role that I would, that I would be suggesting, off the top of my head, I'm more likely to go for Celt that Celtic striker Egon. Cause you know I can't say his name, the young French striker. I didn't even I tried to say his name, I can't say it, so let's forget it. Um, it'd probably be people like that to be fair with you if I had to go for one. Um, but who am I? My decision don't mean anything really and truly. But on that note, I'm gonna get out of here. People, it's always a pleasure. Deluded, I'm out.